Sketchbook Express drawing application for the iPad. Sketchbook Express is published by Autodesk, makers of AutoCAD. Sketchbook Express was an application for the Mac long before it was an app for the iPad, and Sketchbook X Mobile is the app for the iPhone. All three have very different looks to them. Right now we're going to focus on Sketchbook Express. All of our students are familiar with the icons for Sketchbook Express. They're on a handout right here labeled, and you'll see they are the gallery. That's where students collect their artwork. The plus icon allows them to add a new sketch, and it saves the one they're currently working on into their gallery. I is for information. The Autodesk publisher provides a great deal of information about their application. They provide sample drawings and demonstrations for how to use it. There's a lot of online help available when you tap the I for information that we don't generally permit kids to access during school. The undo arrow and redo arrow, the brush editor, which we'll spend some time looking at, the draw styles, which everyone needs to be familiar with, symmetry mode, text, and the two most important yet difficult to master features are transform and layers. When we go into our brush editor, one very important thing to note on here is the fill bucket right here at the top. I'll demonstrate that in a moment, but it allows you to fill any closed shape or figure with a solid color. You can change the radius of any stroke from thin to thick, and you can change the opacity. You can make that mark appear more transparent by turning the opacity slider down, sliding it to the left. You can make it more opaque by increasing the opacity and sliding the slider to the right. You have a variety of different tools, pen, mechanical pencil, pen, airbrush, paint brushes, magic markers. These two are erasers, very important that you master the use of the erasers and then a variety of drawing pencils. You can pick your color in one of two ways. By using these indicators across the top, the color wheel or color circle, and the rhombus, which allows you to select value. If a student does not see any color in the stroke indicator box, most likely they're at the top of the rhombus scale of value and the mark is going to be white, which will not show up on a white background. It does, however, show up on a darker colored background. You can either change colors using these two directional changers, or you can slide your hue, saturation, and black-white ratio sliders. And you'll notice that the uh, indicators right here move around the color wheel and around the rhombus as I slide those sliders. Quick demonstration of what we're talking about right now. I've selected a blue, the fill bucket. When I tap my screen, I fill my screen with blue. If I switch to another drawing tool, like this magic marker, it keeps the same color I just had. That will not show up on the screen I filled with blue. However, if I go to the top of the rhombus and make my value indicator white, then when I come back, I can write on my screen in white if I increase the opacity of that white mark. Undo. So those are our different brushes in the brush editor. Now let's look at the draw styles and find out how draw style can be important. In the draw styles, I have free draw, line tool, rectangle, and circle. Students are accustomed to drawing with free draw, but the line tool is a fantastic tool if you'd like students to create closed figures like quadrilaterals, triangles, or any other polygon. We have the rectangle tool, which allows you to create rectangles and squares and the circle tool allows you to drag out circles, which are very difficult to make, and ovals. You can see very clearly on a student's iPad which draw style they have selected, because if they have the line tool selected, you'll see a line there. If they have free draw, you will see the S-shaped line. You can see when they have rectangle tool or circle tool selected. And one of the greatest features that we have on Sketchbook Express is the symmetry tool. Most basic drawing applications don't have a symmetry tool. But when you activate symmetry, you'll see the same image reflected on both sides of the line of symmetry. So when symmetry is turned off, we see a wavy line. When symmetry mode is activated, we see that wavy line reflected. And I always tell students it looks like a butterfly since it's one of the basic figures that we use to teach symmetry with. That line of symmetry is going to run vertically if I've started drawing with my iPad in a vertical position. And when you draw on one side, the iPad creates the image on both sides, whether using rectangle tool, circle tool, line tool, or free draw. Symmetry mode reflects it across that invisible line of symmetry. When you reorient the iPad and turn it from a portrait position to a landscape position, it would keep this same line of symmetry unless I started a new sketch, turned symmetry mode off, turned it back on to do symmetry mode in a horizontal or landscape orientation. We do have a text tool 
On Sketchbook Express, it brings up a keyboard where students can type in text and move it around. They can simply pinch and zoom, squeeze to have the opportunity to move that text around wherever they would like. When they're done, they can press done, and that text is locked in place unless you use undo arrow to take it away. Now, transform tool is an extremely difficult tool to master. When you activate the transform tool, it lets you transform everything that is on this layer. And so far, we've only been drawing on one layer. I can use two fingers to pinch and then move that layer around. And we see, since my layer is blue, you can see it moving around on the white layer. Once I put it where I want it and press done, then I'm drawing on a brand new screen and that layer has become one element in the overall composition. I'm gonna cancel out of that right now. I think it's gonna help you a little bit more if we look at the layers palette very quickly and how transform and layers work together. In Sketchbook Express, the free version of the app, there are only three layers available. If you purchase the full Sketchbook drawing application, you have an unlimited number of layers um, or a very large amount of layers. This one only allows us three, which is good for teaching the concept of layers to students. When we open up the layers palette, there are a few items I want you to note. The eye icon, when you tap it, it makes your layer invisible. If you open up a Kids Sketchbook Express app and you can't see anything that they're drawing, the first place you should go to look to see what's happening after you check in Brush Editor to make sure they're not up at the top of the rhombus is to go into Layers. If they have that red X over the eye icon, that layer is invisible and everything they draw on it will be invisible. The other thing that you should check is Opacity. If a student turns Opacity down, that layer becomes transparent. It becomes invisible. So if the opacity slider is all the way to the left, you can see they've drawn something right here on the layers palette, but it's invisible to the eye. It's because they've reduced the opacity on it. The four icons at the bottom are plus to add a new layer, plus plus copies the layer that you already have, flower plus brings in an image from the photo library, and the arrow exports that the layers. For example, flower plus, I want to go to my photo library and in my camera roll, I'm going to bring in an image. For instance, an image of the Mona Lisa. Now that I go back to my layers palette, I can reduce the opacity of the Mona Lisa so you see my drawing behind it. Now when you get into multiple layers, and by the way, this could be used to annotate. If you want to bring in a worksheet as a background and have the kids annotate on top of it, the worksheet can be a standalone document and the layer where they annotate and write their answers or write their examples would be a standalone document. They can export them together or separately. And one item that many students fail to grasp are that you can change the order of the layers. There are three lines on the side of each layer. When you press and hold and you'll see that layer becomes activated, you can change the order of the layers. Whichever layer is on top is going to have priority with viewing now that I have my blue layer on top and it has full opacity. Notice my Mona Lisa layer still has the blue active rectangle around it. I have to move up, tap on the blue layer that I already drew on, then I can reduce the opacity on it and see Mona Lisa again. So transform and layers, two very difficult features to master, but very important when doing graphic design on computers. The last icon, the arrow allows you to export. I'm sorry, it allows you to merge the two layers into one. Again, since we're only working with three layers, if you're doing something more complex than annotating on top of one document, you'll frequently have to merge. If you'd like to learn more about Sketchbook Express, I invite you to view the Art on the iPad section of the Montlou YouTube channel, where you can see many of the lessons that students experienced last year in art classes when they were learning about the basis of Sketchbook Express. Enjoy.